I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, I'm, I'm what you consider, you would consider probably a deserter or a traitor to the cause. Um, because I was a filmmaker in the Philippines and I made it like around five movies and I created two TV shows. And then after 10 years in the industry, I left, like the, the, the day after the premiere of my last movie, I left to go to business school. So, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, what, what is he doing with his life? Why is he suddenly, uh, you know, leaving behind uh, cinema to, to become like a suit? And um, the reason I did this was when I started making films, and the Philippine film industry was making around 190 films a year. This was like 2002. And now we're making around 25 films a year. So imagine, you know, the drop, and that's because of piracy, television, all of these things. And I wanted to kind of, I realized I could maybe help the industry more as a businessman as opposed to a filmmaker, uh, just like one single filmmaker. Uh, I, if I became a businessman who understood the creative process and who respected creators, then maybe I could be of more help to the industry. And, and what better way, where better place to go than the center of entertainment in the world, which is Hollywood, right? And so I came here and I realized that the same thing was happening in the U.S. So things get scary. There's this guy, he's a very, very famous filmmaker, Terrence Malick, and his, his new movie just came out. And I saw the trailer, and like, wow, this is a new Terrence Malick movie. And it, and it said, available on iTunes, the same day it's available on the theaters. And I realized things are getting bad, because right now people have kind of stopped going to the theaters and to cope. Either they're releasing DVDs earlier, or they're releasing like art films day and date. And so now it's a very, very scary time for, for entertainment in general. The world you're going through, it's a really, really scary um, period. But it's also very exciting, I guess. I, you know things are bad when, like, so I've been taking a lot of these entertainment classes and people always say, oh, we're making four quadrant films, or we're making tent pole films, and you realize that things are bad when marketers have classified movies into demographics and target markets. And, and not like, um, they don't look at the story anymore. It's kind of like, oh, will this reach the 18 to 25 demographic? Will we get the 40, uh, women 40 and above? And um, people are saying now that TV is more exciting than, than uh, film, and I kind of tend to agree with that. Um, but at the same time, there is so much changing that all the rules are being thrown out the window. And you can see that like with House of Cards, or the return of Arrested Development on Netflix. Right now, you don't even need a network, right? Yeah, right now, you don't even need a network to make something great. Seven years ago, it would be impossible to make something that, that more people uh, more to, to, that more people see compared to, let's say, uh, an episode of Modern Family. But now, it's completely possible. You could upload your film, any of these films tonight, and tomorrow, uh, maybe next month, they'll have two billion views. And if Psy can do it with a, with a language that only 65 million people, none of us, well, I'm maybe three of us here, speak Korean, but two billion views, right? If Psy can do it, you guys can. Um, so today, in, the few, in a few minutes, you will have one of the happiest moments in your life. So many of you will feel for the first time ever what it's like to experience something you toiled over and worked hard for um, with a huge audience. And you will laugh with them, you will cry with them, you will hear that silence when something dramatic and poignant comes on screen. And this very special moment can only happen with cinema. Because for example, um, as opposed to a play or a concert where you're performing for your audience, or like a TV show or a book where people are consuming your work in the, pri in the comfort of their own privacy, cinema is the only medium where you experience your work with your audience en masse. And I remember experiencing that for the first time during my own short film screening when I was in college. And I have to confess, I became addicted to that feeling. And that's when I realized I wanted to become a filmmaker for the rest of my life. And, and then I went to business school. Uh, <laughs> but yet with this comes a hard realization. From this point onward, your film is no longer yours. And it's hard to realize that, and it's hard to accept that. And no matter how hard I try to convince you of this, you will never truly be able to accept it. I know because, you know, I've been trying to convince myself this for a decade, and I still, I still fail. This is when you will also start going through that weird phase, a phase only other artists, especially artists going, working in pop culture, go through. A lot of people will be congratulating you, a lot of people will be saying, this is awesome, awesome work, and you'll be like, it's a complete high. And then the next day, you're going to Google your film, and then you'll see a tweet, like a 140 character tweet saying, 
oh, this guy's film sucked, and then you'll just get really depressed. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, so just one blog entry, just 140 character tweet could ruin your day, and you will doubt yourself, and you may go so far as to question your value as an artist, or the validity of your voice. So, I guess the only advice I can give you is this. In the end, it comes down to the relationship between you and your work. As counterintuitive as it may seem, you have to make your work for yourself. You have to be true to your voice. Granted, you're making movies for an audience, but if you yourself are not happy, then why bother? In 10 years, you will forget the reviews, you will forget the fanfare, you will forget the controversy that may come in your film. All you will have is you and your film. And the question then will be, can I stand by my film? Can I stand by my work? Will I be able to show this to my girlfriend 10 years in the future and be proud of it, right? Because it represents me, or it le at least it represented a big part of me at a certain period in my life. So this is what I wish of you. It will be a struggle, especially after this, when you go out into the world. You will work long hours and lose a lot of money and wonder if it was all worth it. You will get your heart broken many, many times. I just hope that once in a blue moon, you'll make something that is worth it to you. Whether critics or audiences think it's good or bad, then in the year 2080, your grandkids can show it to your great-grandkids and go, you see that? That was your great-grandpa. So good luck and congratulations on being creators today.